were visiting the baby because the mother had been involved in some voodoo. And there is a lot of voodoo that's very prevalent down there. And so rather than looking at little Ember's condition as a medical issue, it was an evil spirit taking over her body. But Ember's a beautiful little girl, and she's also two years old. So this is a real, really busy little household now. And we all got to cuddle on both of them. Um, we were able to spend most evenings with the Clays. Um, two nights we walked up to their house and had dinner there. We had a lot of playtime with the kids and a lot of conversation. Heard a lot of um, stories of Shelley's adventures and pains there in Haiti. Um, Leanne even got to help Keziah do her homework one night. She goes to a missionary school and had a stack of homework and Dad said get to it and so Leanne slid right in and got it done. <laughs> and as the weeks went by, the Clays shared more and more with us. And one of the things that really stood out to me, we were visiting on the last evening, and she said, I can't imagine myself living anywhere else. And so the Clays are going to continue as long as they can to help the poor and the sick and the hungry, and they'll continue to do what God called them to do. Now Arda will entertain you. <laughs> How were the plays funded? They do have a website and they do get funding that way, so small bits and pieces here and there. They are not sponsored directly by any church. Um, they have had some family money that has kept them going up till this point. So I guess you could say they're self-funded. Okay, I'm going to talk about the apparent project itself. Um, the apparent project is also known as an unorphanage, is an amazing organization. Uh, Shelley and Clay are meeting the needs of the adults in Haiti and are doing so in keeping families together and children out of orphanages. They are helping mothers and fathers in poverty to be a parent to their children. They are educating and taking care of street kids who don't have a parent. You get the word there, a parent constantly, okay. Um, in fact, at this time they have three young boys living with them that are part of the apparent project. They have above their house like a mother-in-law's apartment and that's where the three boys are living. Uh, the Apparent Project has a facility for the artisan artisans. Uh, I have problems with that word. Uh, the second floor is where the artisans meet to create these beautiful items. It is quite a busy facility, and the children are running around in the courtyard. There's a crib for sleeping babies, and toddlers are sitting by their mothers and fathers as they, as they work. There's some pictures that we have. Later on, they'll go through those where the mom is sitting sewing and there's a baby laying across their lap. Or you can see Leanne sleeping, holding a baby as she's supposed to be working. <laughs> but we won't talk about Leanne sleeping because she's not here. Um, <coughs> the beads, as you saw in the back, are made out of um, scrapbook paper, cereal boxes, calendars, and any other kind of papers that they can. And they're, they're rolled. It's a real art to cutting, rolling, gluing, shellacking the paper rolls to make the beautiful beads that are one of a kind. Sometimes children will come to the gate with empty cereal boxes and Shelley will give them some money for these items. She's trying to teach them about earning money and not receiving a handout. She doesn't just give money or anything to people because she would be swarmed by people on a regular basis if she did. Um, the apparent project is giving adults a skill to earn money and be proud of that skill. All proceeds go to the artisan that made it. Shelley has also started to teach them about saving some money and is requiring them to open a bank account. Shelley said it is quite, an in it is quite interesting to watch the bank tellers accept money from individuals that have had none in the past. So if you can imagine somebody coming with $100 because they sold so, so much jewelry to the, the bank. It's a real treasure. 
A number of the artisans in the apparent project program have saved enough money to buy land and have a house built. Uh, what a great success to meeting the needs of these Haitians. Lunch is served uh, daily to all the artisans and children in the facility. For some, this might be the only meal that they get that day. A parent project has hired a local he, uh, Haitian Siamese to prepare the meals for everyone. Sometimes they can serve up to 60 people daily. We were privileged to be able to have lunch with them. I refused one of the lunches. It was spaghetti noodles with sardines. <laughs> Everybody else ate it but me. But, I mean, our team ate it but me. I mean, that was not going to be mine. Well, the avocados are this big, so I had an avocado for lunch, okay? <laughs> <laughs> okay, um, the top floor of the guest house uh, is for those visiting Haiti and to assist with the apparent project or uh, other local facility. We felt fortunate to have two bathrooms, two bedrooms, a kitchen, a living area, and a beautiful porch. Uh, this guest house is a way to help pay for the rent of the apparent project site for a cost of $10,000 a year in rent which must be paid in one lump sum per year. Most of the individuals we came in contact with live in a tent with dirt floors or a 14 by 14 foot home. In the back, I don't know if you saw, there was a taped off area with a bed and a big table. Uh, one of the people we met, Junior, lives in a house that size. And yes, six people sleep in one bed. And yes, they did have a dining room table with six chairs around it. And they were very proud, and it was a beautiful home. So. <laughs> On the bottom floor of the apparent project is a small apartment, mark, apartment that is used in emergency. At this time, a young mother and a newborn are living there. Uh, she was living in a two-man tent on a hillside hours uh, before her baby arrived. The young, uh, apparent <coughs> project with the Dutch organization have paired up to build houses for people locally. The house, when completed, is a 14 by 14 foot wood house on a concrete slab. These homes are painted bright colors. When walking around the community, you can see many of the 44 homes that have been put up. The houses are a welcome bright spot in a crumbled community surrounding a parent project. When we would sit on our back porch or the front, well not the front porch, our back porch, if you looked over the hillsides, you would see these bright colors of houses, and we knew that those were some of the houses that Shelley helped to get going for people. Um, I could go on and on about the apparent project and all the good they're doing. It has been a real pleasure working with them, and we are planning to continue to work with them in the future. For many of the Haitians, their futures have been brightened due to Shelley and Corrigan willing to be missionaries in Haiti. Um, I talked with Shelley's mom. A couple of times she lives over in Lacey, and when I talked to her the other day, um, this is what she said. Um, so I wrote a note from Shelly's mom. It was incre incredible what you did for them. Most people give money to the Haitians, and they spend it on food, and then it's gone. Your group has made a change for these people. tell you about a typical week in the life of Shelley Clay. Proverbs 31:20 fits Shelley perfectly. She opens her arms to the poor and extends her hands to the needy. Um, Shelley is the mother of four young children as well as the surrogate mother of about 80 artisans. God sends her a steady stream of people to help. There is always someone who needs her love, attention, and help. She has a heart of gold and shares it with anyone who needs it. I don't know how she juggles it all and stays sane enough to keep on helping them. Yes, I do know it's God who keeps giving her the strength and love to keep on. Here are some of the people she helped in the week we were there, as well as answering our million questions, helping the jewelry makers, mothering four children, and talking to numerous people who are always stopping by to visit or ask advice. Vesseline is a 17-year-old, hard-working artisan. No. Okay. Um, two days before we got there, 